All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, so like you hear from my voice, <clears throat> I'm a little under the weather, caught a head cold, or more so mucus, you know, just trying to get up out of the body. Been taking herbs to push it out. So I'm a little, <clears throat> a little down, a little under the weather. But, um, you know, just extending off of last week and <clears throat> still harping upon the subject, you know, of matters because, you know, we're in serious times, you know, we're in exciting times and we at the end of times, you know, which is the end of the world of Esau. All right. And, um, I've been wanting to go over this. I see brothers, you know, of course, brothers are bringing out the scriptures, man, because <clears throat> a lot of uh, Israelites out here that just sprung, you know, out of nowhere, you know, they took things, you know, they take these these scriptures in the way of being carnal, you know, and um, truly when you've been taught by teachers and you have understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know that this thing of ours is spiritual. All right. And it's uh, truly backed, uh, excuse me, and it's truly fully about faith. All right. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. All right. And the things hopeful, roughly paraphrasing. OK, so it's something you can't see. So if you can't see, obviously, is what? It's the spirit. All right. So I want to read just four or five verses here with Apostle Paul. And um, this is Second Corinthians 10 and 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who in present I am base among you, but being absent, I am bold toward you. All right, because when you read, you know, you know the scriptures, Paul, you know, his letters were were uh, you know, rebuking, reproving, you know, the churches, which is in particular this church Corinth. All right. And um you know, also is written, you know, Paul letters are hard to understand, you know, weighty and powerful. All right. <clears throat> so Paul is saying, who in present am I base among you, but being absent, I'm bold toward you. All right. Because, you know, it's a, it's kind of sort of a, you know, it's a, it's a kind of different spirit when, you know, you write a letter to a brother, you know, and I, and I compare, compare it to today, you know, like today we do our sit downs. And uh, you get to watch a brother prophesize and break down the scriptures. And, you know, you see these men out at camp and you, you see them, you hear them. But it's another spirit also when you see these men in person, because it's the power behind the words in which they speak in. You know, it's the spirit. So I can understand when Paul wrote letters, he had to be sharp. You know, he didn't want no misunderstanding, you know, wording taken the wrong way. Everything had to be sharp, you know, but when he was among the brethren, he showed humbleness, man. You know, he showed charity. He was, you know, just like everybody else. <clears throat> and that's the way the Lord taught us to be. And we have this true brotherhood today. And I'm going to say within Great Millstone, you know, brothers, brothers are brotherly, man. You know, even though brothers are stern, brothers are strong, you know, all steered some, so, you know, but most of most importantly, brothers are, uh, you know, are humble. And especially when it comes to our apostles, you know, our apostles show great brotherhood, you know, even though they are very stern, you know, but that's the way things are supposed to be, because how do you supposed to keep order? You know, you have to keep order. It's all about order, man. You know, when you pray and you ask the Lord as it is in heaven uh, here on earth, give us this day our daily bread. You ask in the Lord, you know, for that order that he have up there, you know. That peace, you know, order brings peace, you know, and we, we're asking the Lord to bring it here upon earth. All right. So anyway, uh, verse two, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Exactly. All right. You got certain men that, you know, and I'm going to use a comparison today. Great Millstone, all right, that you're not, you know, not a part of Great Millstone, but you're watching, you watch your videos, you learn some, 
You know, some you get mad at with certain brothers say certain things against the different camps out there. And you think that great millstone walking in the flesh because in your mind, you saying, oh, man, I knew it. Always a brother from Great Millstone, always talking about a brother. Why he just can't support the brother? You know, he out there doing the works too. You know, he just trying to trying to trying to put put in the work. GMS be hating, man. They be hating, man. You know? But guess what? See, what you don't understand, because you you're a carnal man with that type of attitude, is that you don't see the love behind it while while brother is rebukely sharpened. He's sharp, uh, excuse me. He's sharply rebuking the brother so the brother can get on board. But being that we in this flesh, you know, and guys are not spiritual, you'll take his correction, you know, and his rebuking as some carnal because why? You got embarrassed other uh, individuals who looked at you with this, with this thing, you know, that you, you carry yourself like this. You a godly man. This is why Yahweh Shai said he had taken on no reputation. You know, and in order for us to be glorified, we have to be humiliated first. You know, just had to quote those two scriptures because, you know, you got the carnal men and you got spiritual men. <clears throat> All right. And um, certain guys, they go, oh, man, GMS, here you go. GMS always talking to starting trouble, always starting trouble. But guess what? All right. If you don't have men to point the finger when someone does wrong you know, and, and boldly speak upon it to correct it, then guess what? You're never, ever going to have righteousness, man. How are you going to have righteousness when, you know, all of you guys, you know, those who it may be, it's not in, it's not uh, toward anybody particular, but toward the different camps that carry this same vibration. How are you to walk in righteousness when you can't correct a brother when he goes off. I'm, I, I want to understand that because there's no way you can do that. You know, everybody could, as long as they teach that they're Israel and everybody could just come up with anything, anybody could say anything on the scriptures, I'm just let them be. And you know what? I'm going to invite him to my Passover as well. I'm going to embrace that brother too because he's an Israelite. That ain't how this thing goes, man. You know, the scriptures speak on how the Lord is dealing with the elect. You know, it's all about the elect. You got to be able to correct men when they go off. All right. You know, so <clears throat> that's what bring righteousness. So I, right, anyway, back to the scriptures, you know, and I just wanted to say all that to bring out the point of carnalness versus the spirit. All right. So Paul said in verse two, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, where if I think to be bold against some, right, against, uh, excuse me, against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh, because men, women, you know, those that don't have the true understanding of the Lord, they think we walk in the flesh. Matter of fact, Esau, Edom, who's, who's striving to demonize us, you know, they think we walk in the flesh. But guess what? The elites know the elect, they don't walk in the flesh. And, and if we walked in the flesh, it would be more easier for Esau to demonize us. And he could have been shut up this word a long time ago, meaning years ago. All right. If we walked in the flesh. But meanwhile, because we at the end, hey, they got to fulfill the Lord's will, too. And that's them, you know, fulfilling scriptures, being the devil that they are. Coming down, having great wrath because they know that they have but a short time. So, you know, just to say it for the record, to be honest, you know, Esau, he don't have to really set a stage. You know, he don't, you know, like El Apostle Gabar, he did a badass show, you know, that that uh, edified me, you know, where uh, he brought out about the 1984, um, uh, the book, fictional book, and how basically Esau, you know, they really do certain things, auto at KO for reaction, you know? So with them, you know, really Esau don't really have to do anything, but just come for us. And he has his laws in place, you know, something called the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, you know, where he could, you know, detain you, you know, at his will. But guess what? There's a power that's over him and a why he can't just do 
what he want to do at any given time is because the Heavenly Father is uh, holding back to fulfill prophecy. But, you know, everybody, you know, those in Israel, the Israel world, y'all should know and know that, look, Great Millstone been prophesizing and telling you that this so-called white man is the devil. All right. He's a deceiver, master of deception, the master of disaster. All right. And he's going to do things and he's not going to stop. He's going to continue demonizing. I was just watching uh, uh, the brother, um, Elder Yashawamba. <clears throat> he did a show on uh, vocab, you know, and uh, vocab, you see how he switched gears. He was an agent from the door, you know, calling us a black, uh, black Hebrew Israelites. When he sat down with brothers, certain men out there, you know, went before camps and and he understand quite clear what we are. But he was paid, you know. He's that agent. He's Satan, man. So anyway, you know, we don't walk according to the flesh, but some men think we do. All right. So verse three, even. um, Well, yeah, verse three, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh because the true fight. When you wake up to this truth and you've been lightened and you've been taught by a prophet, a teacher, you know, this gospel of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Guess what? The first the first fight is is within you. You're going to have to fight against Satan far as being tempted, man. You know, putting away the old man, you know, the things that you were doing that you know that are now wrong. You're going to have to fight against your flesh and to not do those things. You know, you're going to have to learn to sacrifice. You're going to have to learn to be humiliated. You're going to have to learn to go through the straight gate, man. All the fiery trickery trials you go through. You know, the spirits be attacking you, you know. So our warfare, all right, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. All right. We're not going to pick up guns and go shoot up Esau and go to jail and die for it, you know, or whatever. What the hell are you doing that for? That shows you that if any man like that dude, if they if that guy in Jersey City, you know, they had the video. If he actually did it or he did whatever it is, the most high, all right, um, is not with that man, okay? Because the Lord don't want us to pick up, you no, know, I'm going to tell you, hey, the Lord don't want us to pick up guns and, you know, <laughs> deal with explosives. Who the fuck, we, where can you get these things from, you know? But the Lord don't want us to do those things because Yahweh Shai said, you know, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai said, wait ye upon me. So I rise up to the prey. So if any fool preparing himself for a combat uh, in the flesh and you out there going to the gun range and working on your bows and arrows, you doing your your your, your 10 sets of pull ups, 10, 10 reps, of 10 sets of pull ups every day and push ups and you militant. Look, man, the most high ain't ain't to, ain't tell us in the scriptures, OK, to go out. And, you know, do sets, do, do run marathons and laps and get your, get your flesh in shape, sharpen your iron, you know, and, and learn, learn the ex, the, 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 you know, learn the experts of the, of the bow of the gun. Lord ain't tell us that the Lord said to exercise these scriptures and go out and prophesize. That's it. You know? So it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to pulling down of strongholds, all right? And how do we do that? By the word, man, by the scriptures. And that's all we have to do. And you see how far it got us. Look how far it got us. Look look what Esau is doing now. Tacky, you know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's scared. He don't know where else to go. So he's going to get violent. He's going to demonize, you know? That's what he's going to do. But what we supposed to do while we seeing these things manifest is get closer with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Put up those prayers, man. You know, if you ain't, if you've been lacking and slacking and praying, you know, maybe, maybe fasting, it's, it's, it's time to do so now. You know, if you got certain demons on you where you might be afraid of with fear, you got to pray. You know, the Lord is preparing us as well. He's preparing us for the day of the battle, you know. The Lord has sent, sent sent unto us the comforter, man. 
you know, which is this word. OK, not some guy in Jersey City that the feds done ran down on. I don't I think it was the beginning of this year or last year. And he got charged with tax invasions. That's not the comforter. OK. You know. Like these guys, some a hey, man, these some of these guys I had done, done uh, made a made a covenant with uh with Esau years ago, you know. They made a covenant and they sold you Israelites out. It was the same thing in the past. It's going to be the same thing today. You know, so our warfare is not carnal. It says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to pulling down of strongholds. So what's a stronghold? Stronghold is what? Ideologies, a uh, man, you know, philosophies, false philosophies, I should say, you know, man's goings, you know, he may make up something. Strongholds are things that, that, that you are, you know, mannering yourself in, conducting yourself in that's not in the truth, you know? Like Islam, that's a stronghold. A lot of jakes are in, into Islam. Christianity is a stronghold. You know, the deception of who the world calls Jesus Christ. That's a great deception. You know, the Lord never looked like him, you know? But when you go do the research and you, you, you find out that that what goes back to who? Says Ray Borgia from the Borgia family. You know, even more deeper, started with Serapis Christus. So then you say to yourself, well, who, you know, well, how did he look? Hey, you read the scriptures or you found out Revelations 1 and 13, you know, you know, woolly hair, feet, feet as brass as if it burned in the furnace. Then you get the understanding, man. So the Lord gave us his spirit to break down strongholds, you know, being a five percenter, being in the gang, you know, going to Esau's colleges and his technology and his education. The the Lord's spirit is is, is way wiser than. Than Esau's education. So you could have went to school for for 20 <laughs> for 10 years, got your degree, you know, bachelor's, master's, you know, all that stuff, and got these certificates. You know, you walk around proud, you know, feel like you're prestige, you know, than every other average smoking Joe Jake, you know. But then when you come across brothers, you find out what you learned ain't true. All of a sudden, you just you start to hate. That's what Jake's problem is. You know, Jake, they they figured, you know, you, you don't know nothing. You ain't go to school. You ain't been around the world. One guy told me that. He said, you can't tell me nothing. Have you ever been to Italy? Have you ever been to Germany? I said, no. Well, you don't know nothing. You can't tell me nothing, young blood. I said, oh, my God. I said, I can go to Italy and Germany. All I gotta do is go on YouTube. He started laughing and shit, you know? But anyway... It says, uh, uh, verse five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhorteth itself against the knowledge of the most high and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. So the Lord cast down everything that you imagine, man. You know, any images that pop up in your head and what you perceive to think is true, the Lord, you know, destroys that. You know, with his truth, because the Lord is truth. So it says in every high thing that exhorted itself against the knowledge of the most high. And right now, Esau is the one that exhorted himself above the knowledge of the most high. Him and the rest of the heathens, because Moab is following after Esau. So that's why we know we are living in Esau's kingdom, according to Job 9.24. We know we at the end of Esau's rule. Esau 2020, he wants to start pushing that. He wants to. You know, <laughs> he wants to start. He's going to mandate that RFID microchip, which we tell you guys, the RFID microchip is the mark of the beast, man. You know, you got different camps out here. Y'all saying that is not. Well, that's going to be the next awake, great awakening. You know, when Great Millstone, starting with the apostles, been telling you that the RFID chip was the mark of the beast. Because that's the next big thing, man. All these other camps going, oh, oh, you know. That's why they're trying to push us out the way so they could push that in the way. You know, you can't have brothers out there telling the streets, you know, you know, the streets, you know, you really, uh, what the scriptures say, wisdom cry out in the streets. When people walk the streets, that's when you see what's really going on. Anyway, casting down imaginations and every high thing 
that exhorteth itself against the knowledge of the Most High, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yahawashah Hamashiach. All right, under the rule, it says, in having in the readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You know, uh, verse seven, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust himself that he is Yahweh Shai's, <coughs> let him of himself think this again, that as he is Yahweh Shai's, even so are we Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, yeah, you know, that's basically the point. I wanted to make it short. But uh, our warfare is not carnal, man. So, you know, we got to be circumspect. You know, I was watching the apostles videos and, um, you know, the word is out, man. You know, the order is set. All right. You got to be circumspect, vigilant and uh, tighten up because um, Esau is a roaring lion, man. Going up and down, seeing who he can devour, you know, and he got plants. He got agents, 007s, you know, you know, hey, we don't know what he's going to do next, but we expect the worst. You know, we know that we're being demonized. We know that this is prophecy. We know that the prophecy is will be fulfilled of when the Lord spoke, spoke about Jacob's trouble. You know, so how do we arm ourselves? You know, prayer, fasting, uh, being more tight, getting your uh, correcting your ways in the Lord. You know, just being more closer to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. The Lord said, um, uh, seek the Lord 10 times more, man. Because our minds went astray, now is the time to seek the Lord 10 times more. Paul said, uh, uh, this is high times to wake up out of sleep. Uh, now this is, uh, damn, high times to wake up out of sleep. And our salvation is nearer than when we believe, you know? So it's really nearer than when we believe, man. Because the more Esau come down, the more Yahweh Shai is going to crack those clouds. And they used to laugh at us when we said crack those clouds. But guess what? Esau ain't laughing no more. All right, two thirds ain't laughing no more. These heathens ain't laughing no more. You know what? And, and guess what? They're getting scared, man, because they just thinking that, you know what? These guys might be right, you know? And that's the worst thing, worst fear they could ever have if the Hebrew Israelites are right, you know? That's their greatest fear. So, you know, with that, I want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakakwadash, I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four legs. Shalom. <clears throat>